Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Harry Potter gave us wizard battles. It gave us escapes from asylums. It gave us friendship bonds that would last an eternity. And it gave us Quidditch battles. There were a lot of things to mine in Harry Potter for a board game. But the designers of this game found the most exciting part about Harry Potter were the scenes where they sat down and took a test. And that's Arcane Academy. You are wizards at a wizard school, i.e. Harry Potter, and you're sitting down to take a test to see who can score the most, i.e. victory points. If that sounds exciting to you, then this is the game for you. You're going to be drafting these tiles by activating spots on your board, and these chain reactions that will come will allow you to do more actions. Theoretically, the more actions you do, the better eh, you should do in the game. If you're not chaining them, then you're not going to be doing as well. Well, that's what you're doing here. If that sounds exciting, then once again, I've got the game for you. For my taste, I feel like the chaining and laying of towels is really fun. You also have the cards that you'll be getting, and they allow you to do wild things. And the game kind of ends when you have eight of those cards finished. You have some private that only you can accomplish, and some public ones that anyone can accomplish. And that's all really, really good. The components kind of let you down. The game just kind of looks bland. I think it's that way because it's kind of generic. But on the other side, it's very clean, and it gives you what you see is what you get kind of thing. So there's not a lot of artwork in it. There are the cards, but not on the board where you're playing the majority of the game. I feel like it's just visually boring. I feel like this is probably the most boring part of Harry Potter that they could have went and stolen. I think that it would have been much better to have done the Quidditch battles or the wizard battles or any other battle against a troll or anything else in those darn movies, except for the part where they sat down to take a test. Whew, got that off my chest. What about the game? It's all right. I mean, I like the, the chaining. I like what you're doing. It's fun. It's kind of a mind puzzle. They get this tile. How's it going to fit up with everything else? You can build on top of other things. But at the end of the day, the package is fine. It's a five. It's, it's, it's not great. It's not terrible. It works. I think it was put out just to have something out to sell. I don't feel like anybody looked at this game and said, wow, this is a fantastic game. And when you put Kevin Wilson and Eric Lang on the outside of a box, you expect greatness. And I think for the type of game this is, it did rise above perhaps what it should have been. If it wouldn't have been in such capable hands, I'm not sure it would have been this good. I just think it's a forgettable experience, which is why you don't hear about this game anymore. I don't feel like it's something that you should run out and pick up. I think if it's cheap enough, you might pick it up. I think you're going to have fun with it. I think some non-gamers, some abstract gamers. And I think it does give you a nice little puzzle. I don't want to be overly negative on it. The chaining is good. I like the card use that's good, giving you different powers. It's weird that the shards are these really beautiful pieces, and the will, the blue, is like this uh, tracker that you have, I guess, because they want to max it out, but it's kind of loose. I don't know. It's just not a very good package to me. The components are not very good, very thin. Uh, the shards are really good, but the player mats are bad. So it's just kind of a give give. But for me, this is one you can definitely pass on up. Try it out if you're a con. Try it out if a buddy has it. But I wouldn't say instant buy unless... You that you just love taking tests or that part in Harry Potter just rocks your socks and you want the board game version of it, then this would be it. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and walk on by. So components for Arcane Academy is an Eric Ling and Kevin Wilson game, which is a couple of good, really good designers matching up. It's very it's an abstract Harry Potter game, is kind of how I look at it. But let's take a look at what's up. You get a very, very bright box that's really cool. You're going to have these little boards. Now, these are not very nice quality, but they're just going to sit on the board, on the table so it matter as much. And you can see that they're double-sided. You're going to get a little rule book here. That's pretty, pretty thick, actually, but you'll see. I'll show you that in the rules section. You're going to get a bag, which will have these tiles in it that are fairly thick, very good quality. And the bag is really nice. It's Arcane Academy. Oh, that's the name of the game. You have a few of these dials that you'll put together. Eh, they're a little loose, but they'll, they'll be fine for this game. You're going to get a bunch of these red gems that are really, really cool. The green ones, for some reason, they get special treatment. And you have generic black cubes. And you're going to have some cards. The cards are good quality, and they'll hold up fine. No custom insert in here. Everything is just kind of backed up. Not a whole lot. I mean, this could have been a smaller package, really. But the box is kind of small, so it fits. And no complaints there. Look, you can see it's a double of the box cover, which is fine. 
you have a little introduction of what the components are and the pictures and kind of what they do. You're going to have an overview of kind of how you set up with pictures and everything looks great. You can see that it's not very bad. It's only five things that you do when you set up. Then you'll get into the rules of the game. You're going to have a casting rest, which is really what you're doing at the end of your turn. Uh, you can see the pictures here, lots of examples, and the end of the game. The actual rules are probably just, you know, three pages max, maybe, maybe three and a half. And you're going to have some advertisements here on the back. And then a quick reference sheet, which is great, because you can just kind of look at this and be ready to play the game. Okay, so this is going to be set up with the game. You're going to have four tiles that will face up that all the players can kind of draft from. And these four public assignments that anybody can accomplish. You're going to start out with three shards. You're going to start out with a little uh, keeper there, if you will. And you'll start with three public assignments that you can do on your own. Only you can accomplish these. Anyone at the table can accomplish these four. Once everybody has this set up, this is the center of the table. You'll be ready to play. So what you're going to do on a turn is you're going to take a black cube and you're going to exhaust one of the tiles. Now, each of your tiles on here will do something different. If you took this one, for example, you would either get a shard or a will. And if you get a will, it represents blue, and it'll be tracked on this thing right here. If you get shards, which you start out with three at the beginning of the game, you want these big red bad buddies. Much more impressive than a dial over there, right? If you put it here on the screen space, and you get to take one of the tiles up here, and you can put it on your board anywhere that you want. If you take this one, you do one of two things. You can choose one of your completed items. You'll see some of these cards up here will be items, and you'll be able to add these to your hand as time goes on or you can complete an assignment choose either a spell in the center or your hand of private cast that spell either spin the shards on here or you may spin the wheel which is the blue and you'll be able to do what it says so some of these you'll see at the end of the game choose one of your items each prestige token that chose item is worth double this just gives you two shards and this one gives you four shards if you spend four will and whenever somebody accomplishes eight of these, the game will end. What's particularly tricky is, if you look right here, you can see that there's kind of a link that's going on right there. You'll see these uh, gray things on the board right here where they'll be able to link up. So if I was to perform this, and I was able to, say, take a tile, I would put it out on the board. And because this is linked up, I would also exhaust that and add two shards to my side. Now, if this board was like this already... And I activated this, I can activate that, but I couldn't activate this blue because this doesn't make a complete like little symbol on it kind of thing. If I had placed it here, now it would make a complete circle. And then it was my turn again, I could activate this and say, get a blue, which would go up to one. And then I would exhaust this, getting two more blues for a total of three. That's kind of how this board will work. And this thing will fill up. And you can always put tiles on top of other tiles, but when you do, the exhaustion tokens go on top of it. So that's one thing you do. That's one particular action that is called casting. The second thing you do is called resting, where you just remove all the exhaustion tokens from your board, and you may discard one of your private cards. You say, hey, I don't like this card. I'm never going to accomplish it. Get rid of it and draw a new one, and you rest. At the end of your turn, you'll fill up any tiles that need to be filled and any cards that need to be filled up. The next person will go until somebody completes eight of these. Then the game is over. You count up who has the most victory points, and that's the winner of the game. So the main purpose of the game, even though those are the rules, is kind of linking these up the best you can. Because if you can trigger somebody, like this one right here has four sides on it. So triggering these the best you can, where you can activate one, but get five or six of these going at a time. So let's say you had something like this, and you were linked up. You could exhaust this one. And then you can also exhaust each one around it because it makes a full link. So that's kind of the game, kind of linking these things up. And the theme of it is that you're at a school, and this is your exam. So think of the owl, the O-W-L-S, the owls. In the Harry Potter universe, it's the same thing. So that's kind of what you're doing is seeing who cast the most spells and make the highest marks. Who should buy this game? I'm going to say fans of Harry Potter, test takers, uh, really light gamers. If you're really into that kind of light puzzle where you're chaining things together, this will appeal to you. You kind of like doing your own solitaire thing, but you're racing against the other people. And you kind of this thing like, do I get the first eight cards I can get done, but might not score me as much points because I'm racing to win? Or do I want to wait for those big points, knowing that somebody else might beat me to get eight done, but I'll score more points than them? And that's kind of that rub that you have here. It's like filler material. It can be a little bit of a mind puzzle if you're into that, but I wouldn't say it's overly deep. You 
kind of you only get so many cards, you're gonna have so many tiles, and comboing them, chaining together is really the name of the game here. For me, it's going to be a purge. It's not going to be something I'm going to want to play over and over. I'm getting so many games, I can't keep them all in here. I got to get rid of some, and this one's going to be on the purge list. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel, lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.